What's up everyone, welcome back to another episode of Steven Inks and today on this special occasion we will be talking about a subject of which I have no background, no expertise and arguably no skills. I know what you're thinking, what else is new, uh, but in fact this is actually on a subject which I do not know very much about. I am going to be taking um, a keepsake of mine and turning it into something to be used for painting and I'm going to paint for you guys and I'm going to use a type of paint of which I have had little to no experience just to see how it goes. Maybe it'll go well, maybe it won't go well at all, but uh, one thing's for sure, it is certainly a video which you can watch on YouTube and that's all I can promise. Let's see what happens. So I've pulled out to my widest camera angle so you could see everything all at once, um, everything that I have, and um, yeah, it's a lot. Uh, so uh, let me go over what the project is. Uh, first of all, this is a tin of um, hard candies or mints or something that I bought at the airport in Paris when my wife and I went there for about 10 days back in 2017. It was a really great trip. It was super fun. It was right before we moved to the United States. And um, I ate all the mints quickly because uh, I just wanted this tin. Um, and I had this design to make it into a paint palette uh, from the beginning. But um, there were some issues that I want to discuss about how that worked um, because I did kind of do something and I'll show you what I did. Uh, I got some cheap gouache just to kind of play around. I already have a palette for watercolor so just to play around with it and I like gouache but this cheap gouache, um, well one of the things that you can notice here and this is a, a sign of cheaper paints is that uh, it sort of cracked and powderized. It almost looks like little bits of chalk in there. Um, and so that's because I had less expensive stuff. I have gotten this set um, of primary colors um, of Hol from Holbein and it's artist series. Holbein is a, a well-known kind of higher end brand. These are made in Japan. Um, and we've got lemon yellow, carmine, ultramarine deep, ivory black, and permanent white. Supposedly this is all you need uh, to get started using gouache, um, using a primary palette. So that's what I want to put in here. Um, but a couple of things I'd like to change. First of all, these are half pans. This is what you typically see water watercolor pans come in, these half pans. But I would like to use full pans for a couple of reasons. One, I can get more paint in there. There's definitely enough room because this has got like 12 different colors. Ooh, excuse me. Um, 12 different colors uh, from the gouache set, but I just wanna do these primary five, so there's gonna be room for five plus a few more for other reasons that I'll discuss later. Um, but also, if I'm using a larger or a wider brush, it's a lot easier to get a wider brush into a, a full pan rather than a half pan, um, and I found that to be kinda helpful with painting, just to have some flexibility. So I wanted to do that. Um, the other thing that I noticed, and uh, I'm going to, utilize this water brush that already has some, some water in it, um, as you can see, to show you this. But use, utilizing the, the cap as a, a pan for mixing was my original idea. And if you notice, so I pull some paint off of this thing, it doesn't really, the paint doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't, it's not spreadable. Because um, it just likes to beat up where it's at. And that caused a lot of problems. It makes it so that I can't mix colors very well, even though it is possible, right? Um, a lot of times the, the, the paints just, the, the liquid won't spread. Uh, so I found a solution to that. And that solution, um, I've sort of tested it on a few things. I got this Altoids tin because I didn't want to mess up this one, which has sentimental value, as I mentioned before, uh, figuring out a few things. And I also have this other one that I use for some cheap paints just to try out even having an even smaller um, uh, palette. Um, and these are Winsor Newton Cotman colors. 
So what I did here is I actually painted this with um, an enamel, an outdoor uh, like furniture paint um, using a cheap sponge brush because I didn't want to mess up uh, any of my actual brushes. And this sponge brush also allows me to put down an even layer. So watch what happens when I take this. I'm gonna put some water on here and I'll get some of that same paint from before just for consistency sake. So now I can actually take my colors, get some of this yellow, and I can mix them because the paint gives me an even surface to mix on. Um, so that's better. I am gonna do that here. Uh, one of the other roadblocks that I have for that, and I'll clean this brush later, um, is that the Eiffel Tower is embossed on this side. Looks cool on the outside, um, but I would like a flat, even surface. So with this Altoids tin, these are also embossed and you could do this project with an Altoids tin, no problem. Um, I ended up getting some uh, wall spackle, which is just something you might have around the house if you want to um, use it to, to repair holes in your wall. Um, uh, I, you'll see me use it later on in the video on this. And uh, I filled in the gaps here and then I painted over the top. One thing additionally I'd like to do is after I put this stuff down and let it dry, it is sandable. So I wanna sand it flat so it's nice and smooth. And then we'll end up with something closer to this, just here, um, and uh, well, I'm see it'll be here, and it'll be nice and um, flat and even. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do there. And, um, Another thing that's gonna be different is I went ahead and for the first time around, I did this on the cheap and I bought this uh, adhesive magnetic tape to put these pans down. It works, you could do it with this. Uh, it's a little flimsy and sometimes because the, uh, the glue that holds the magnetic, um, the tape onto the, uh, the plastic is not very strong and it's not waterproof. If you get liquid down there, it could loosen up and then you have to either reapply or do a new one. It's not very uh, reliable. So I went ahead and I got these uh, neodymium magnets. These are rare earth magnets. You can get them pretty easily on Amazon. I bought these at um, like an office depot. I don't love this shape. You can get them as a circle and I would they used to sell those at a local craft store uh, but then they stopped selling them. I don't know if it's a supply chain thing or if they just stopped carrying them. But anyway, I couldn't get a circular one, so I'm doing my best with these. And I have um, also found this set of adhesives that um, includes a plastic primer. So this right here is a primer for the plastic of these pans. Uh, that makes it so that it fuses really well with plastic because even when it comes to this sort of super glue type of glue, oftentimes uh, certain types of plastic, particularly cheaper or kind of slick plastics, it doesn't bond very well. So um, that's what I went ahead and I grabbed and I used here. There's a specific reason why, and I'll, I'll go into it later, um, why I have these on the bottom, um, but they'll basically be where I place my paints, right? Um, and then I have additionally, and I'll show you this when I assemble the whole thing, but additionally these on the, on the side, I'm gonna do four or five of these as well. Um, and we're gonna keep these away from each other because they're very uh, strong magnets. So until they're completely cured and dried, um, which is gonna be a little bit longer. So I'm gonna, put all of the pans that I need ready in here, well, in here, after I clean this whole thing out, um, add in the spackle, sand it down, paint over the top, and then we're gonna look at um, what it looks like in the end. I'm excited to show you. One more thing I wanted to say that I forgot. Um, as you can see, I'm gonna put up on the screen all of these different things that I had to buy. Um, the cost of them, uh, yeah, you can see I put up on the screen all of those things combined. Definitely, it is cheaper to get a watercolor palette 
uh, like the one that you've seen me use in videos where I watercolor. Um, they're easy to find online, on Amazon, whatever. I'm doing this um, not to save money, but uh, to make something cool that I can carry in a, a compact way to be able to paint outdoors on the go um, and just have a little conversation piece, something to remind me of my memories of my trip to Paris. So yeah, this is not a financial decision. This is a, a creative decision. Um, and yeah, if you're looking for a, a portable watercolor palette, there's a lot of great ones that you can find on the internet and maybe even at your local art and craft supply store. All right, that being said, let's get into it for real. Interestingly enough, it, it uh, took me a while to actually clean this palette. I had to do a bit of scraping and um, I was trying to be careful with it because I, I didn't want to damage the, um, the tin, uh, but just letting it soak for a while, I was able to actually clean off a surprising amount. I got it looking um, good as new. Uh, so the first part involves just cleaning off the, um, the lid and then taking out all of those extra pans of the cheap gouache so that I could put in the new stuff. And then we found, uh, this is the spackle. This is just the stuff that you normally buy for fixing holes in the wall. Um, easy to get at a hardware store. And I realize, and I'll explain this again later, that this actually isn't the kind of spackle that you um, sand down. That does exist and you could get some, but uh, putting a little bit of water with this spackle is what thinned it out and made it uh, smooth and thin over the top so that when you paint, you don't get any texture um, from the spackle uh, that's included with the paint. I also let it dry uh, between painting and spackling, mm, I think about 24 hours, but you could give it 48 hours if you wanted to be doubly sure. Um, yeah, that ended up being good enough for that to work. Right, so having looked at the uh, top here, this is nice and smooth and even turns out that the spackling that I had wasn't the kind that you sand, but uh, you use water to smooth the surface and scrape uh, off the edge there, which is what I did. So you can see the top is filled in and there's just a little bit of a residue right there. I can live with that, I'm happy with it. So my enamel paint is gonna go on the top here. And um, I like to use one of these craft sponge applicator um, brushes just because the sponge gives me a texture free um, result as opposed to a brush, a traditional brush, which you would see bristles and that's not what I want for this. Um, so let me just open this up and we'll paint the first layer. I want to say two to three layers before I get something that I'm really happy with, but we let the layers dry in between. So let's just do this one right now. See what I'm saying with this sponge, this is um, still got a little bit of texture, but much nicer than it would be with a bristled brush. Okay, and I can tell I want another layer of that for sure, but let this dry first. And um, I don't want paint getting up the sides of this because if paint gets into this part where the, um, where the latch secures on the front, it's going to make it hard for the thing to close and reopen. So I'm gonna go around this with a Q-tip just to clean the edges up. Let 
and just get the rest of that there. All right. That looks pretty good to me. Cool. Let that dry, we'll give it uh, two or three more coats and I'll show you what it looks like in the end. I ended up pouring the paint into the uh, full pans and um, I should point out, I've done some research on this. A lot of people say that there's a chemical difference between tube paints and paint pans, like watercolor pans, or in this case, gouache, um, that you shouldn't dry them and, and then reconstitute them with water. I found that the results are pretty typical, um, typically the same. Um, even though there are some differences between what the paint end up looking like. If you want your paints to look really smooth and flat, you can use a toothpick to kind of um, poke the paint into the corners of the pan, but that's just kind of an aesthetic thing. Personally, I don't uh, really care about that, so I just poured them in. Um, yeah, and um, after that, I did leave them to dry, because if you, kind of pour water on these paints, they will um, drip and run. But typically, if they're dried completely, and it took about 24 hours for them to dry, then the amount that you wet them uh, in order to paint with, it typically is dried just a little bit later if you leave it out in a warm place or um, the heat of the day. So um, yeah. With that in mind, um, that's what I did with my paint tubes, and uh, let's just uh, check in and see how everything else uh, finishes up. This is the end result of my work, and uh, I ruined it. Uh, not really, but um, I'll I'll explain. So um, inside the tin, I have my painted enamel. Got a little bit stained. I did some swatches. I'll show them to you later. Um, and the original plan was to take these empty um, pans and put them along the side, like the outside, and they could be an extra water well. Um, this and I cannot emphasize this enough, did not work. Um, the problem was, and I thought I had figured this out by having them up against each other, that um, when you put any pressure vertically on this, it just kind of goes uh, flip sideways. So um, putting any liquid in here and trying to mix it around, it was just not very convenient or useful. Um, so, the plan here now is um, to just take these out and I can use a full pan later if I want to put more paints inside. Um, but this is what I have right now. It's this primary set. Uh, I did also take this piece of sponge that was inside the box and I thought maybe I could put it in there and have it be a place to kind of wipe the brushes clean, but that didn't really do anything significant. So I'm going to take that out. Um, and what, what this leaves us with is um, just the ability to put maybe another uh, three more um, pans in there. And uh, I don't have any other colors, so it's just going to be these for now. But I, I do like that I could, if I wanted to, come back and add in another. I'd probably add a brown. I want some more warm colors, uh, like a warm blue and a warm red. Um, I feel like that would be very helpful. So those are colors that I would add in there. Or maybe a green, because mixing greens here is not very convenient. Uh, but definitely mixing browns was an issue. I'll show you the swatch in a minute. 
What did work and worked better than I thought it would was this enamel paint. Now, it did get stained, so you can see it's kind of a pinkish, yellowish hue right now. Um, but I was able to pull the brush and do a little bit, do little tiny swatches here, here, and here so I could mix a couple colors at once. They do sort of mix together, but when you're painting in plain air, that's kind of something that happens. So overall, um, a really good project, something that I am going to come back to um, at some point moving this in. Uh, taking this space and, and adding in what's left over. So that's cool, and I did some swatches. Maybe I'll like some swatches. Uh, what I did is I, I took all the colors that were given to me and I did them horizontally and vertically. Usually when I get a new palette, um, any kind of paints, usually watercolors, which I use the most, I'll do this. And I can see what happens when I mix the colors together, and you can see there's a couple of places where um, you can see uh, some similar colors. And uh, over here is where I try to mix some colors. I tend to try to mix browns, greens, um, some kind of purples, and skin tones. A lot of these colors were attempts to make skin tones, and it's a challenge with this palette. I feel like the red isn't quite great for um, skin tones. It's a little bit too, um, I don't know, red in a traditional sense, if that makes any sense at all. Um, and I think maybe here I come close to something good, and maybe here for a darker skin tone, but I noticed definitely darker skin tones were even more of a challenge. Some of these lighter skin tones uh, were a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, overall, actually, the paint itself looks a bit chalky which is disappointing because this wasn't a cheap set and a whole bean does really make great watercolors. I've never used their gouaches before, but this is the kind of um, chalkiness that I'm getting here. Anyway, um, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna make some paintings with my new palette and it's either gonna go really well or I'll just delete this footage and do it a second time and I won't tell you that it's the second time, it's trickery. Uh, enjoy the video on the next clip. So I actually ended up doing this um, on the first take, if you believe that. Um, and I decided to go through and take my time on these paintings because like I said, I, I don't feel like I have that much experience with painting. And really the thing when it comes to trying something new is to uh, not give up. So um, I tried a bunch of things here. Um, by the way, the, the source of the inspiration for all of the reference photos here are from my time in Korea and um, traveling around in that those areas uh, when I was younger. Um, this particular one is actually a market, an outdoor market in Osaka, Japan. Um, and it's interesting, there's a lot of lines that I make with the pencil here just trying to capture um, what it looked like because I actually shifted the perspective a little bit from the original photo. So um, I ended up having to figure some stuff out, which is one of those things about reference photos. You don't want to be a slave to them and do them exactly as a recreation because you're not a copy machine you know you're making art so it should have the mood encapsulated um, and I actually brushed over this sort of warm brown color um, as kind of an underpainting to give this sort of default um, yellowish brown warm color to the whole painting if I missed a spot then you'll see that that warm color um, come through I actually like how that turned out um, and I don't know why but I didn't do it with any of the other paintings um, the fact I think that I had uh, those windows which were white and wanting to have uh, something to paint the white onto rather than just leaving them blank as white things um, just gave me a little something extra to do wanted to try and do things in a different way since I'm doing a type of art that I don't normally do. Um, yeah, hopefully uh, you guys appreciate that. 
and um, yeah, gouache is interesting as a from a watercolor perspective which is what the other kind of um, art that I make besides pen and ink is that sometimes I do watercolor um, it's kind of opposite you sort of start with watercolor you start with um, lighter tones and you go darker but with gouache since it's an opaque paint you have the ability to start with the dark stuff and actually put lighter stuff on top of it which is um, interesting and also kind of refreshing. It's in nice that you could do things in a different way than what you normally would do. Um, so yeah, I had a lot of fun painting this uh, octopus hanging from a metal uh, ceiling rafter. This is a, um, it was like a giant mannequin of an octopus, if that makes sense, not, not a real octopus that was hanging as sort of this decorative element with all these string lights below it um, at that market. And I remember it really well. And I think one of the um, sort of points that I'm proud of here is that I was painting this and my wife came by and saw it and she was like, oh, that's the, um, the market in Osaka, which was like five years ago. So if she still remembers that, then I must have done a pretty good job of it, I guess. Um, yeah, um, I, I like how this one came out and uh, hopefully you do too. So here we have a temple um, from a hiking trip I took with the elementary school that I used to teach at. Uh, it was pretty common, I think it was maybe once a month, every other month, that we would all go out to dinner together and it usually involved some sort of activity, typically hiking, because I was in sort of a, a rural area in the town that I lived in that was really close to some mountains so there was lots of cool things to see and usually uh, what you end up doing is hiking to the top of the mountain where there's a, um, a temple usually up on the top and they all kind of, um, this is not meant to throw any shade on um, temples in Korea, but they all kind of looked pretty similar to each other and the hiking experience was pretty similar. So you've done one, you've done the, um, them all basically, um, but still very picturesque, very beautiful. Um, not something that would look like anything you seen in America, at least to my knowledge. I don't have a lot of knowledge about that. Um, and also typically at the top of these mountains, there's usually some kind of a restaurant that has uh, delicious food. And so we would all eat together and um, laugh and have a good time. So even though I'm not sure if I remember this particular hiking trip so much, I did find this photo in a bunch of my old photos from when I lived in Korea. I do remember so many trips that we had like it and definitely they are fond memories um, that I have and is quite a beautiful um, area place to visit. I thought that the gouache didn't come out as well as uh, the other two paintings that I did. Maybe just uh, a little bit of lack of confidence, um, but also I didn't particularly care for um, I was trying to get my greens to be a little bit bluer as they went towards the, the background. Uh, and I had a hard time mixing the blues and the greens and the browns that I needed with the palette uh, that I have. And I think probably focusing on uh, colors that are similar to the colors I have my watercolor palette would have made that a little bit easier. Um, and these are very, uh, the, the paint colors that were offered in this gouache set are, um, I don't know how to describe it. I feel like they are colors that someone who doesn't paint thinks are the colors that they need. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, the red is a very red looking red, the blue a very blue looking blue. 
um, and the yellow, a very yellow looking yellow, but they don't mesh together as well as I would like them to. Um, the way that painters talk about colors of paints is uh, cool versus warm. We have a warm yellow, a cool blue, and a cool red. And then the black and the white are not things that you typically see in a watercolor set, so I'm a little lost on how to use those. Tried my best. Um, but it would be nice to have um, a cool red, blue, and yellow, and a warm red, blue, and yellow. So a few more color additions to my palette would have really helped me uh, be able to see what colors I needed to put in uh, to this painting. So anyway, I do like it. Um, and this last one, this is a Korean dish known as bibimbap, um, which is basically stands for, I think, um, stirred rice is kind of the translation. Um, and uh, basically the idea is a lot of vegetables and some sauce. There's usually an egg. Uh, in this particular type of bibimbap is called um, tosot bibimbap, which means um, hot stone. So this was my favorite kind of this dish actually, where they would cook, I believe in an oven, this stone um, stoneware bowl. So it was piping hot. If you touched it, you would burn the skin off your fingers. Um, but then you can hear it sizzling when it comes out, kind of like the um, fajita plates at your uh, local um, Tex-Mex restaurant, um, if you are familiar with that style of food. And it was rice and vegetables, and in this case, a raw egg, which cooked as you stirred it around in the piping hot bowl. Um, delicious combination of flavors, not something you would see in America. One of my favorite dishes, um, one that I miss a lot. So I thought I'd sit down and just try and um, paint what this looks like uh, when you get this kind of food. Um, I believe actually that this particular dish was served to me on the day that I went on the hiking trip where the last painting came from. I can't remember if that's exactly correct, but we definitely ate a lot of food like that um, as a compliment to our hiking trips uh, as teachers. It was a lovely community to be involved in. Just the education community in Korea, there's a lot of similarities to the education community in America, which I am currently a part of, um, and then a lot of cool differences as well. Um, lovely country, Korea, if you ever get a chance to visit, you definitely should. Um, yeah, and and this was a, a painting that in the middle I felt like it wasn't going well, and then it took a turn. Still not perfect, but I am very happy with how this came out. You could see I forgot to paint the napkin and I decided to go back in. Something you couldn't do with watercolor, put a lighter color over the top of a darker one because uh, watercolors are transparent and gouache is opaque. So. That was cool and I'm glad I got a chance to do that and you could see I go back in and, and refine and, and paint over the top of things and reinforce things as they go on. So cool, um, those are my paintings. Enjoy the rest of the video. Well, that was certainly an adventure and I had a lot of fun painting for you guys even though gouache was something that I have not really tried before and um, the results might not be 100% what I had hoped, but I think I did pretty well with it and I'd like to keep coming back to it. So I'm really glad that I was able to make this palette and I can travel with it and take it anywhere with me to continue to build and hone my skills in gouache. Um, if you enjoyed watching me paint today and you'd like a chance to take a little bit of that magic home with you, you're in luck because we're doing a postcard giveaway. Please be a subscriber to my channel and leave a comment down below um, in the comment section of this video. Let me know something new that you're trying. Um, I'd love to hear from you and I, uh, I love getting that feedback. Hopefully you would love to see a little bit more of my painting skills once I have a chance to 
uh, build them up in a future video. But the regular subject of this channel, pen and ink style art um, and fountain pens in particular, is coming up in the next video in about a week or so. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I can't wait to hear from you in the comments down below. The winners of the contest will be announced on the community tab of my channel in about 48 hours from the posting of this video. So best of luck. Um, I will see you in the next one and continue to take care of yourself and each other. And I'll see you next time.